Hey VC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post another quick video here. Uh, this is going to be kind of a recent finds video, just some new stuff that's come in over the past uh, week or so. Um, you know, I, I kind of noticed, I guess, with the whole COVID thing that's been taking place, obviously the record shop has been closed and uh, the first few weeks I was doing some work from home, which is, you know, kind of putting stuff online and, or, you know, listing stuff and doing some changes to the website. Sorry, bumping the table there. Um, and then like the last two or three weeks, uh, we've been going into the store, probably going to actually open again on Monday. Um, but going into the store and, you know, kind of listing things and reorganizing and actually getting ready for kind of a big renovation. So I've been doing a lot of stuff there too. And, and that's been really cool too, because with, um, you know, kind of everything going on, I typically like to go in a little bit later in the afternoon and the other guys tend to come in a little earlier. So it's kind of like, I go in and I open the store and it's just me in there. And I'm just kind of working and putting stuff online and just spinning stuff the whole time. And it's just, it's just like a blast. <laughs> but uh, in the process of doing all of that, I kind of noticed I'd started to build up quite a bit of credit and hadn't really bought a lot of stuff lately. So uh, I had this huge chunk of credit built up and, you know, like over the past week or so, just kind of cashed it like all in. Um, I ordered some stuff and, you know, stuff that came in the store and all of that. So, uh, yeah, it's just kind of in the last week, I've had a ton of stuff come in, which I thought was really interesting as I was pulling this stuff out and getting it ready for the video. You know, every single record that I'm going to show here is stuff that I picked up from the store credit that I had. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's kind of nice, you know, to, to not actually have to spend money, if you will, to, to get stuff into the collection, which is something I'm always trying to do, you know, figure out a way, ways to do that. So uh, that was pretty exciting. And, and another thing too, again, since I'm kind of just talking and rambling here about working there, uh, the other thing I think that's that really came to light as I was pulling the stack together is that having, doing the credit thing, it has allowed me to purchase and pull into my collection a lot of things that otherwise I would not have, that I, I wouldn't go out and buy. So, um, you know, whether you're talking about, I guess I should say what I'm talking about is not $100 or $150 records or things like that, but, um, you know, that $25 or $30 reissue of something that, sure, I wouldn't mind having in my collection, but there's no way I'd go out and pay $30 for that, that reissue of that particular album or $35 or that type of thing. It's like, I just would never spend that kind of money. But doing stuff on credit, you're like, sure, I'll pick that up. You know, why not? So that's kind of been another plus, but kind of working that way. So just another thought that kind of popped in my head. But anyway, let's just jump right into what the recent finds were. We'll start off here with this one, which is uh, the New Testament, Titans of Creation. This is one I've been waiting on too, because I'd actually ordered it a while ago, and it just kind of took a while to come into the shop. But um, you know, with this whole COVID thing, a lot of it's been running fairly smoothly, but some pieces can be kind of hit or miss, and you're waiting a bit longer. And uh, but yeah, this one finally came in. Um, always great to get another testament album i mean you know one of the early thrash bands that's still putting out stuff on a very regular basis today you know their album brotherhood right before this was a fantastic album but this one here i was pleasantly surprised i don't know exactly what i expected but i guess maybe my expectations were a little low but uh threw it on listened to both lps and i listened to it while i was putting stuff in discogs but uh i just remember thinking I really like the feel of this album. Uh, definitely has those classic Testament riffs, um, a, a lot of double bass throughout the, the album. That's something that really kind of stuck out as well. But yeah, I was extremely and pleasantly surprised with this album, you know? And then the other thing that even shocked me just as much was the orange sunburst vinyl with the colored vinyl. And I was like, I like that. And you never hear me say that. I can't stand colored vinyl. I mean, you guys know how I am about that if you followed my channel. But I actually like that colored vinyl. So I'm like, okay, definitely a nice pickup and definitely a nice new release from such a classic band. 
one band that I would definitely put in my, uh, if we had to make a second big four, Testament would definitely be one of my, my second big four, along with Exodus Overkill, but that's a whole other video that we'll do some other time. Uh, another pickup here was uh, the new Jason Isbell, Reunions. I had no idea he had a new album even coming out until I started seeing all these review videos pop up on YouTube. And I'm like, why is everybody reviewing that album? Matter of fact, what is that album? <laughs> and, and realized it was a, a, new, a new release, which was perfect because the night after I realized it, I went into the shop the next day and we got a copy in. So I, I grabbed it. But um, yeah, really, I mean, just kind of, I think par for Jason Isbell. Um, my quick 15 second review is that there were three or four songs on here that are the, the kind of the, what I would say the quintessential Jason Isbell that I love so much, kind of the, the Southeastern, you know, that album, that sound, if you will, and love them to death. The, a good chunk of the rest of the album, and this is not negative in any way, but a good chunk of the rest of the album kind of felt like a, hey, let's just kind of do what we want to do. Like, we don't have to make every song on the album all kind of fit into the exact same thing and exact same style and all of that. And they just kind of did what they wanted to do. So, uh, you know, definitely another great album by him and great to have in the collection. And much like his other albums, you know, I've only listened to this from front to back one time. So I'm going to have to dive in a bit deeper into that as well. But I've been on a huge Jason Isbell kick over the past six months or so because I've just kind of recently discovered him in the past six months or a year. So, so to some degree, he's kind of a newer artist to me, thanks to people here in the VC. So next we have the Jesus and the Mary Chain. And this is the John Peel Sessions. Just kind of a neat little 2LP set. I didn't realize it was a... Um, Anyway, I won't get into that, but uh, it's just kind of like a little greatest hits type of thing. Just has a lot of their classic hits on here, including uh, Honey, which is one of my favorite songs by them. But yeah, you know, I, I love the Jesus and the Mary Chain. I just, their their general feel of just that thick fuzz guitar, what I almost label as dark sensuality. Um, it's just, just a great sound and a great representation of what was awesome about alternative rock in the 80s. So that was a, a nice pickup. Another one I'd waited on because I'd ordered all three of the reissues, but this one took a little bit longer to come in. Uh, and this is Dio, Magica there. This is the two LP set along with the seven inch, I think. Uh, yeah, with the seven inch single. I mean, definitely great to have have them reissuing those, those older Dio albums. You know, you have this one in Dragon and... Um, machines um, and as you guys know when I talk I kind of shorten the names of things when I'm referring to other albums but you know what I'm talking about um, but yeah so I was definitely happy to finally get this one in as well and I think with this piece too this is kind of where the collector in me comes out because there's a huge piece of me that is a just a you know fanatical musical lover but there but there's also a huge piece of me that's a, a musical musical collector that loves collecting musical stuff. And, uh, and I think that line, I've mentioned this in comments in quite a few different areas, but that's kind of a line that a lot of us tend to play when we, when we get into collecting things like vinyl and just all the stuff. And I think sometimes we're a little too hard to where we, you know, want to tell people that it's all about the music and that's all that matters. And I'm like, no, I, I, I disagree. I think, there's the music side that totally matters. Then there's also a collector side to, to some of us that really matters too. And so anyway, I'm kind of saying that to say this is why I haven't opened this one or the other two new Dio releases. And I think I'm just going to kind of keep them sealed for a while. Uh, something about the collector in me doesn't want to open them. So, but I mean, I have them on CD and, uh, and so forth. And they're not the albums I go to the most frequently, but still... It's awesome to finally have all the Dio studio albums uh, on vinyl with, when you include the box set. Moving right along. Schizophonics. And this is Land of the Living. Again, a new band to me. Just discovered them. 
uh, I think I was watching some videos on YouTube and this this cover was in a thumbnail off to the right. So I clicked on it, listened to a couple songs, and I was like, I kind of like that stuff. And and basically what it is, it's a it's um I guess technically it's kind of garage rock, but it's really, really kind of heavy, full garage rock. And and really I kind of consider it to be a little more psychedelic than than garage. But uh which I'm gonna put it in my psychedelic section, but you know, a current band, this is 2017, but just really kind of just heavy in your face, traditional garage slash psych. So really cool stuff. I think that back cover gives you a good idea of kind of exactly what the sound is, but was really happy to, to get a copy of that and, and discover a new band. Next here we have Accept, Objection Overruled. And this is the music on vinyl pressing. Um, just one more step towards completing my Accept Studio album collection, uh, disc discography, if you will. Uh, actually, I do only need two more. Um, I need a Heat and a Death Row. That's the other one that I need. So then once I get those two, the collection will be complete. But uh, I'm really happy that Music on Vinyl has gone back and, re and been reissuing a lot of those late 80s, early 90s accept stuff because it's, it's number one, it's so hard to find in original pressings. You know, you better have $100, $200 ready to pick up a, a nice original pressing of some of these. So, uh, yeah, getting these reissued has been fantastic. And this one's from 1993. So, again, if you're not a huge accept fan, maybe you're not as familiar with this time frame with them or whatever but i think except has been good from from day one i mean going back to uh, metal heart and balls to the wall and all that stuff all the way up through blood of nations and stalingrad and all of that i mean i pretty much love all of their stuff so again just another great addition to to the except collection and can't wait to get my hands on a copy of death row if anyone out there has a nice near mint copy, you know, open for trade or anything like that, let me know. Would love to work out something. Uh, the next one here, this is one that I was spinning one night when I was in the store working, so I decided to pick it up. Um, but this is the, the Blues Project, the best of. I've had a couple albums by them in the past, but just kind of this best of greatest hits just really had a lot of their stuff that I loved. Uh, so found that in great condition and decided to go ahead and pick that up. So a nice addition to the site collection. And another one I discovered spinning in the shop one night. Had never heard of uh, Glenn Hansard or Hansard uh, Between Two Shores. Again, I just saw the cover and thought, let me give it a spin and threw it on. And at first I was kind of like, eh, you know, it's OK. And then the song Why Woman came on. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm definitely getting that. Um, just, you know, kind of singer, songwriter, folk. I think he's Irish. I, I, I think. Um, I said, I don't, don't know a ton about him, but just a, that song, Why Woman Alone, just really, really caught me. And it kind of it kind of pushed my Jason Isbell button a little bit. So it was definitely another really cool artist to to discover there. So another really cool piece. And now these are kind of going into some of those albums I was talking about, like really the next four here, when I was saying stuff I normally just wouldn't pick up by going out and buying, but totally different with the credit thing. And one great example of that is the Eurythmics Greatest Hits. I mean, I pretty much have all their studio albums, but again, this Greatest Hits, I've had the CD forever. And it is just kind of a fun album to listen to from front to back. I mean, it has all their... They're huge stuff that, you know, everyone kind of knows and all of that. So, um, you know, Sweet Dreams, uh, Here Comes the Rain Again, Would I Lie to You, Missionary Man. Uh, probably my favorite song by them, which is Who's That Girl? I think that's probably my favorite Eurythmic song. But yeah, just another another nice piece to, to pick up. And these two are probably prime examples of that, which is U2 Pop. You know, I definitely love that they've gone back and reissued all of the U2 albums, um, which is really cool, especially that later stuff that's kind of hard to find or, again, you're spending 200 bucks to try to get 
but yeah, I mean, under normal circumstances, I wouldn't go out and pay $35 for this, but yeah, I was able to pick it up, so that was very, very cool. And this is one, too, where, you know, you have a, a couple of decent songs. I mean, for the most part, the album is okay, but this isn't exactly the album that you go to when you're looking for the best of U2, even though there is good stuff on the album. So I'm actually in the process of uh, putting together a U2 box set. So this definitely helps helps me get closer to that. And I think all I need now is just their last two albums. And then I'll, I'll have that box set complete. Uh, well, I have all the albums complete. I haven't you know, finished designing the box set and all that yet, but I'll definitely share that when I do. And same thing here. How to dismantle an atomic bomb. Again, another cool piece to have. You know, Vertigo, you know, a few other really good tracks on this as well, but another great piece there. Figure Ross here. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name of the album because I would just totally butcher it. <laughs> but uh, this is their 1999 release. You know, a very interesting band. I, I, I still think with them, definitely my favorite album by them is uh, Untitled which is the name of the album, and all the tracks are untitled as well. Um, especially track four on Untitled, I think it's probably just their best piece, period. But that's definitely my favorite album. I would say uh, takes probably my second favorite, and then this one. Um, just kind of a really mellow, laid-back kind of album. Um, them kind of doing their, what I label, strange thing, but just kind of a ple pleasant, just a pleasant spin, if you will. So again, seeing that one come in, I was like, sure, I'll grab it on vinyl now. So another great addition. Sunra, Crystal Spears. I won't go into too much detail with this one. It's just, again, Sunra kind of doing his, his weird thing. Um, and I'm not sure if this one had been released on vinyl before. But uh, anyway cool piece. If you like the strangeness of Sunra, you'll definitely love that album as well. This next one here was a, a recommendation from Billy Hurst, which I think like over the past couple months, I've bought like four albums strictly based off of Billy saying, you got to have this. Okay. <laughs> it's like done. And this was one that he had mentioned a little while ago, which is um, um, Marcus King. I'm sorry. I was going to say something else. This is El Dorado. And it definitely is a really interesting album. I remember when we were doing the live stream a little while ago, Billy made a, con well, we were supposed to pick out some, our favorite like R&B albums or something like that. And Billy pulled this one. And so it was kind of interesting and he was talking about it. And again, that's when he kind of told me, this is one that you, you know you should definitely have. And I went and picked it up and he, he wasn't joking. This album is very, very interesting and different. Um, you know, I'm going to file it in my country section, but I mean, are there elements of country music here? Definitely. Are there some serious, strong elements of just straight up R&B music here as well? I mean, yes, th this, this is kind of a very cool artist that really just does what he, what he feels, what he hears. Uh, you're not locking him into any genre or any, you know, what's the cool thing to do or what's in right now or that type of thing. I mean, he just really feels the music that he feels and that's what he rolls with. So that was a very, very interesting and, and very cool discovery. Once again, thanks to the one and only Billy Hurst. Um, what else here? Greta Van Fleet. Another one I held off on getting for quite some time, but we had a few copies in the the store so I went ahead and grabbed one but you know when they first came out you know kind of the rage from the standpoint of you know that they kind of have that classic rock you know the classic Zeppelin type of sound and that type of thing and yeah I thought it was kind of cool and liked them but I wasn't like you know itching to go out and grab the album but again with the credit all built up I thought it might be a good time to go ahead and get it in my collection so nice addition here on that that four track EP and another one I just held off on so long forever picking up. It was just never worth the 30 or $35 for it. And, uh, and actually, this new reissue came out. And I think it's 
this is only like 25, but, but still, uh, Eric Clapton Unplugged. Definitely still probably my favorite Unplugged concert. And of course, you know, you got Tears in Heaven and uh, his acoustic version of Layla on here, which which is, I mean, just an amazing recording. I mean, I know it got so overplayed and now it's almost cliched and stuff like that. But if you can imagine actually going back and kind of hearing that for the first time, I mean, that was to take a song that was already genius and be able to take it to another level like that, I think was just freaking awesome, especially the guitar solo in that. I mean, in my opinion, not some not the most complex, but some of the best best plucking Clapton's ever done, in my opinion. So nice to finally have that that classic piece in the collection. And then just like three more here and kind of wrap this up. System of a Down, Mesmerize here, one of the reissues. Um, I am happy to finally get this in my collection as well, especially considering this was the first album that brought me to System of a Down. Uh, the very first song I ever heard by them and liked was BYOB, which is on this album. And um, I mean, you guys know System, just a very different kind of band you know, kind of very creative, doing their own thing, and yeah, just kind of very cool to finally get that in the collection. And since I've been doing those, um, like those hip hop videos that I've done over the past couple weeks, I did a couple of those, and then I did the uh, try a sample video that I did, talking about samples from hip hop, you know, it's really kind of put me in a mindset of digging back into some of that old funk stuff and just kind of, you know, wanting to go back and pick some of that up. So one of the things that I came across was this Barquets, which is flying high on your love. Uh, for those maybe that don't know the Barquets, I mean, if people just know them a teeny bit, they probably know them by one of two songs, which is Soul Finger from back in the 60s or Freak Show from the 80s, which was featured in the movie Breakin' and stuff like that, were probably their two biggest mainstream type of hits that people would have heard about. But uh, they have a ton of albums they've put out over the years. And if you dive back into their catalog, especially that late 70s and early 80s stuff, I mean, they they did they did the funk <laughs> without question. And they oftentimes mixed a lot of it too. Where they You would have a song that was just straight up dance funk and then the next song would be just like total metal R&B. And then they would go back. I mean, you just always kind of found that mixture on their albums. But this is definitely a great one from 1977, I believe. Yeah. Uh, with songs like uh, Shut the Funk Up and a few other great tracks on here. So really, really cool. And again, I see Bar K stuff pop up all the time, but popping up in like near mint condition that's always seems to be the challenge so it was kind of nice to find these two with the other one being proposition here and same thing this is from 85 and just another great soul kind of funk album from the barquets so there you go vc that's all the stuff that i've picked up over the past week or so um like i said i pretty much took my credit down to zero but it was, it was kind of great getting a lot of neat stuff in. And uh, yeah, as always, let me know what you think. And we will talk to you soon. All right, take care, guys.